Yeah, I mean, certainly. I mean, we were disappointed to, to see, you know, uh, his name in the news and all that's going on. But, you know, look, hey, I love Deshaun Watson. Uh, he's like a son to me, and, and that's how I love him. Uh, and as far as all the, the legal stuff and all that, that'll all, you know, take its course uh, and all that stuff. So I certainly can't, uh, you know, speculate or comment on any of that stuff. Uh, but uh, all I can tell you is, you know, I've known Deshaun since the ninth grade, and, man, he's – I, I, he's been nothing but exemplary in every area that I've ever known him in. Uh, you know, three years here uh, as a player, I think I had a chance to yell at him one time. Uh, he was five minutes late to a team meeting that he overslept for, and that's it. Uh, so, I mean, he, this is a, uh, that's the Deshaun I know, and uh, I can only, uh, you know, base my. Uh, thoughts on, on my experiences with him, uh, which have been, you know, uh, just wonderful. And uh, again, I love him like a son. Okay. Um, with each passing day, the number grows. Uh, it's, it's up to 14 civil lawsuits alleging sexual misconduct and sexual assault with uh, Many as 24 accusers, according to Houston lawyer, um, the plaintiff for the the uh, the accusers, Tony Tony, Tony Busby. Buzz. Um, it, yeah, it um, it's so extreme right now until I just wonder where the middle ground is. Because if, if if it was one or two, or if it was one, yeah, it's yeah. like okay, there's a you know there's a there's a, a, a something happened and they see it different ways. Mm. But with 14, it's like. Either Deshaun is not the guy that people like Dabo Swinney and everybody else who thinks they know him believe him to be, or this is the biggest and most, you know, incredible takedown conspiracy we've seen in some time. I don't know where the middle ground is here, or, or maybe, maybe it's there was some sort of encounter with some of the accusers and others are, um, you know, after a money grab, um, it, it, who knows? Or or maybe something inappropriate happened with some of them, but not all of it. And there's a lot going on, and there's literally a lot happening yeah. in real time. As in, we just got, moments ago, uh, a statement, finally, people were wondering when Deshaun's lawyer, Rusty Harden, was going to say something substantive as um, Tony Busby had been on the offensive the whole time. So I think I think it's worth reading this in full. Would you agree, Michael Holly? I think it's worth reading. I agree. In full. And, we, um, and we we can we okay can trade so, off on on paragraph. Want to attack? Want to tag team it? All right, cool. Yeah. I'll take the first one. I want to emphasize okay. at the outset that we and Deshaun recognize the sexual assault and harassment. That sexual assault and harassment are not only unlawful, but morally wrong. It takes courage for women to come forward to report being mistreated, particularly when they attach their names to a lawsuit. We do not take these allegations lightly. However, fairness to the accused is equally as important. Opposing counsel has orchestrated a circus-like atmosphere by using social media to pub publicize 14 Jane Doe lawsuits during the past seven days in a manner calculated to inflame the public and malign Deshaun's otherwise sterling reputation. In addition, the tactic of refusing our request to confidentially provide the names of the plaintiffs so we can fully investigate their claims makes uncovering the truth extremely difficult. Anonymity is often necessary as a shield for victims, but opposing counsel has used it as a sword to publicly humiliate Deshaun before the truth-seeking process can even begin. I believe that any allegation that Deshaun forced a woman to commit a sexual act is completely false. And in the one case in which we have been able to identify a plaintiff, we have strong evidence showing the allegation is false. In January of this year, 
a woman attempted to blackmail Deshaun by demanding $30,000 in exchange for her indefinite silence about what she stated was a consensual encounter. It is our belief this woman is the plaintiff in cause number or cause number 2021-15613. Please see the attached declaration by Brian Bernie. That's his marketing rep. This calls into question the legitimacy of the other cases as well. We have received numerous unsolicited comments in the past week from many licensed massage therapists who have worked with Deshaun in recent years. These women describe him as a gentleman and a model client who never engaged in inappropriate conduct. Indeed, before these salacious claims, everyone who associated with Deshaun described him as an outstanding, respectful and compassionate man. Again, we are taking the allegations very seriously, but we ask only that people not rush to judgment, that people not be unduly influenced by opposing counsel's antics, and that they let fundamental fairness to both sides rule the day. Thank you for your patience and understanding. And speaking of patience, we always appreciate Charles Robinson from Yahoo Sports, uh, his time and his insight uh, every Tuesday on Brother from Another. We thank him for his patience. Uh, while we read Rusty Harden's statement, Charles, um, not sure if you had a chance to read it yourself, listen to us, or even process what Rusty Harden finally said, but take it away. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I think it's um, a measured response, and, you know, there, there are obviously points in there. He's he's clearly taking some pokes at Tony Busby, the, the attorney who's at the center of, as you said, these 14... Uh, civil suits that have been filed, essentially saying, hey, look, we've asked for the names of the Jane Doe's attached to the suits so that we can basically do our own backgrounding here and and what I think would effectively mount to a defense. I think it's interesting for Rusty Harden to say that when there are clearly dates that are attached to um, these these civil suits. And it's as easy, I, I would think, on their end to say, okay, well, was there a massage on this date? Here's the individual that was tied to the massage. Now we know the identity of this person. Let's move forward. So, you know, I, I think it's interesting for him to say, well, geez, he won't even give us the names. When, in reality, you know, the, there are enough describing facts in these cases that, at the very least, unless there was nothing happened at all that day, um, they're... they're shouldn't be a lot of difficulty tracking down the names. Now, I'll say this. He's right about the um, allowing this to unfold. It's uh, something that we've heard from one side, Tony Busby's side. Um, all of these suits have been filed. They're out there. Everyone's been able to read them. There, there's a lot of graphic detail in some of these suits. And they are from Jane Doe's, but that is also something that's used in, in sexual assault cases to you know, prevent the identity of the accuser from bec becoming public. I think what's key here and what's sort of left out in all of this is whether or not Tony Busby is going to follow through on this idea of backdooring criminal charges, which is essentially he's going to file all these lawsuits. He's going to put together a package of affidavits, take those to the Houston Police Department, the Harris County Prosecutor, the Harris County Di District Attorney's Office, excuse me, and say, here you go. You know, impanel a grand jury. Um, the women, the Jane Doe's, are these women, whoever you know supplied the affidavits, are willing to sit for a grand jury. And then we take this into a legal realm where, by the way, everyone's under oath and can be prosecuted for the statements that they make to a grand jury. Should there be criminal charges that come out of this, then this takes it into a whole other realm. Um, I think the the overriding thing I see here from Rusty Harden is this is going to be messy because now you have an opposing attorney, Rusty Harden, who knows Tony Busby, who has interacted with him before in the legal community in Texas, you know, taking a little veiled shot there. And it's following up David Mulagetta, who's who's um, Deshaun Watson's agent, you know, um, went to Twitter and laid out a subtle message, essentially like, hey, you know, the, the accused can also be victims. And in, 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 this is paraphrasing the tweet there, but the, we, we understand the nature of the seriousness here, but the accused can also be a victim. And if that is the case. The people who are perpetrating the crime against them should be, you know, there should be a pursuit of those people as well. So this just signals to me that you're not going to see this go away quickly. This is going to be something that's going to be extricated. 
and it's it's probably going to get messy. And we're even though it doesn't feel like the start of this, we're really just at the start. Okay, if if we're just at the start, you know, Michael Smith has this in his feed today, second item, where he says, "Hey, teams aren't scared, essentially, uh, of Deshaun Watson." And and my question is, yeah, I've noticed. Why aren't teams scared? I'm, I'm just trying to I'm trying to think like a GM, uh, Charles. Mm -hmm. And I've been wrestling with this for a couple of days. I, I don't really have an answer. I'm like why? I'm not saying he's guilty, mm -hmm. but I'm just trying to think as a GM going to an owner saying, "Yeah, you know, hey, uh, yeah. By the way, we just traded for Deshaun Watson. See you later." How do you? Pass that off to your ownership and to the public. Um, I think I think it depends on how you characterize. You know, Mike Mike says teams aren't scared. I I think that I, I wouldn't say scared. You know, I yeah, I wouldn't say they are scared. I would say that they have questions. And so I've talked to a couple of teams um, that have been previously involved in this, and they clearly have questions about what's going on here. They want to know. Um, more about the lawyer, the attorney that's at the, the heart of this. They want to know more about Lisa Friel's involvement, the vice president, essentially, of mm -hmm. investigation for the NFL. Um, they have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Now, do I think that if the Texans said, hey, guess what? Now we're picking up the phone today. Do I think teams would call? Yeah, I do. I do think they would call. Um, do I think there would be an elongated conversation about exactly what is at hand here for these teams? I do. And... I think there are two key components here if the Texans say we're picking up the phone. If you're a franchise that's looking at Deshaun Watson, the first hurdle you have to get over is, do we believe he's innocent and, and on our own merit? Not the NFL's investigation, not what Tony Busby's saying, not what Rusty Harden's saying. We need to do our own independent work on this so that when we come out and say we're backing him, we are backing it on our own merit. What we believe, what we've found, what we've determined and if you can get beyond that hurdle and say, since we believe that we're willing to trade for him, I think then the next hurdle becomes you have to turn to the league and go, where are we at here? Like you have to say to Roger Goodell, we need some kind of guidance about where you're at in your process. And the league is typically pretty opaque about these kinds of investigations. So there's a lot of complication here mm -hmm. for the interested teams. The interest is there. I would say that it is now yeah. accompanied by a lot of questions. Yeah, and that's what I mean. It's like they have not been shy, to my knowledge, about letting it be known that they remain as interested. But you're right, there's more due diligence involved. Is opaque uh, also another word for slow? Because the other thing, as you know, Charles, is that these things, these league investigations, Lisa Friel does not rush for anybody. So this right. isn't something that's going to be wrapped up. I mean, there, it's like, almost like it's four fronts for Deshaun. It's and in no particular order. It's the court of public opinion. Mm -hmm. It's civil court or the civil suits. Potential, we'll see. Criminal investigation, if not prosecution, we'll see. And last but certainly not least, the league office, which may at the end of the day be his biggest concern because right. uh, not only are they slow, they're also heavy handed. Um, what's interesting, though, what's interesting, uh, our man John McClain, and I'm not sure if he's written anything since Charles. I don't want to bring this up. Uh, he wrote this a couple of days ago that he believes that Watson is still destined to be traded, but rather than by the draft, as he's been predicting, he now thinks it could be during the season at the trade deadline or before the 2022 draft. Teams will want Watson to have his legal issues settled, and they'll want to know the results of the NFL's investigation for possible violation of the league's personal conduct policy. He also goes on to write this, man. He says, uh, before the civil lawsuits were filed against Watson this week, the Texans were planning to get multiple teams competing for the quarterback. They were hoping to receive three first-round draft choices, two second-round picks, and at least one defensive starter in a trade sometime before the draft. I bring that up to ask to, to bring that to your attention, but also say this. Word around the campfire for me was that there was at least speculation, maybe form, informed speculation, that the Texans may actually do some kind of a panic move this week that they may go ahead and just offload him in a trade. I don't think so far, so far as release him, but offload him in a trade because if you're Nick Casario and you sign 30 free agents, 30 plus free agents right now, free agents trades, 
is not only are you itching to maybe reset this franchise and make over this roster, Charles, but is this what you want to be dealing with right now? So what? Do you, so take us. You talked about other teams. Take us inside what you think the Texans' thinking is right now as it relates to how they navigate this, because this is a curveball that, you know, conspiracy theories aside, we don't we don't believe they saw coming. Well, it's a it's a um, quagmire that you are now walking into with a new head coach, a new general manager, a change, you know, a changing structure, changing roster. And it is not an insignificant quagmire. It becomes, um, say this is something that advances into the legal realm prior to the start of the 2021 season. Well, okay, there are 14 lawsuits filed now. Let's say it settles at 14. If even half of those go um, advance into the actual courtroom, you're talking about motions, counter motions. You're talking about evidentiary, hear evidentiary hearings. Um, that's, and that's just all on the civil end let alone if a grand jury is impaneled um, for this, then you're, you're talking about a whole other separate track of litigation that is equally, if not more important for Deshaun Watson, if a grand, jury, a grand jury were to be impaneled. So I understand the thought process of, does this change the calculus in the minds of the Houston Texans? But what they're going to deal with now is, you have to get an NFL team. I mean, I think it would have to change the calculus of, of what you thought you wanted for this guy. So for example, what you laid out in terms of the compensation, um, three firsts, two seconds, and then a, a player mixture sprinkled in there. I would say that the initial interest in Deshaun from at least one of the teams I talked to was not far off from that, um, was pretty darn mm -hmm. close. And so, um, I would say that that had they picked up the phone a month ago, you're talking about a different scenario if you want to offload him quickly. But here's the issue with now wanting to offload him quickly at this point. You have a number of teams that are sitting there going, wait a minute, probably not a good sign that all of a sudden now you're in a hurry to move him when before you were angry that we even made an offer. And, and I've literally <laughs> heard from teams that there was a palpable sense of anger that teams were even calling the Texans about Deshaun Watson a month hmm. ago. And so, hmm. um, so let, let's talk about, let, let's just, for the sake of argument, let's talk about a couple of the teams that are interested here. Obviously, we've, we've heard about the Miami Dolphins. We've heard about the, the New York Jets. We've yep. heard about uh, the San Francisco 49ers have been in that calculus. Yep. Um, you, you're talking about the Carolina Panthers. Um, Every single one of those situations, the first question you have to ask yourself is about ownership because this is an ownership move. That's who signs off on this. This is not a GM mm -hmm. move. It's not a coaching move. It's an ownership yeah. move because you are attaching your logo to Deshaun Watson, and it should this enter a legal realm every time he goes into a courtroom, that's your logo walking in on two legs. And so um, David Tepper, let's let's talk about the Carolina Panthers. That's This is an asset, former asset manager, made a ton of money understanding what distressed assets looked like. He's a, a big-time hedge fund manager, um, someone who can do the math on, on you know, hey, cost-benefit analysis, and, and at what point does the price become too attractive to pass up and worth the risk? Stephen Ross, real estate magnet, you know, a little bit of a different um, situation there, particularly if he was someone who was really fully behind the Tua pick, it's a more complicated situation for the Miami Dolphins. Um, you know, the Jets, another complicated ownership situation that I think is still starting to smooth out with Woody Johnson back in the fold. And then you have the 49ers um, that have been definitely in a culture of inclusion, a culture of being very sensitive to the Me Too movement, um, to kneeling to social justice, a lot of different things. So it's, I would say it's pretty complicated in all those, all those situations. And it's going to have to do with mm -hmm. basically, if you're going to deal for this guy now, really rolling the dice and going, if we screw this up, it's completely on the owner and nobody else. Hey, thanks for watching brother from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us three to 5 PM Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.